ChatGPT is an amazing tool for learning basically anything a lot faster. And in this video, I'm gonna give you some strategies and examples for how you can help it help you learn data science and just basically get a lot done faster. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. So if you're watching this video right now, you probably know what ChatGPT is, but for the very small number of you who don't, I'll let you in on all the fun. ChatGPT is a generative AI tool developed by OpenAI that was released to the public in November of 2022. And when it came out, it kind of took the world by storm. I mentioned this in another video, but right now it's riding pretty high in the overall hype cycle. And the use cases for it are pretty much endless. They can range from helping you draft emails to writing SQL queries to, in some instances, maybe automating whole jobs away. I did an entire video about how I think that one is a little bit exaggerated, at least for now. But one of the ways that I found it to be the most useful is in helping me learn things a lot quicker. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some strategies and examples of how you can do that for data science. If all that sounds good to you, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, which I know many of you haven't because 70 to 80% of my views come from people who aren't subscribed. Also take just a fraction of a second to smash the like button. All right, so the first thing I'm going to say up front about ChatGPT is that it's very sensitive to the way that you prompt or ask questions to it. And there's this whole emerging domain around prompt engineering, which helps to get the most value out of responses from ChatGPT. But one thing it's particularly good at is taking on roles and building semi-structured itineraries or schedules. I've used this to quite reasonable success and it's not just for work or for data science. I've used it to great success in helping me build travel itineraries. And so particularly as you begin to learn something that's bigger and broader, it's very easy to get analysis paralysis, seeing all the videos out there and wondering where you need to focus your time. So we can have ChatGPT help us with this. So let's start with an example here. I've done a video before about how I would learn data science if I were starting over in 2024, but just to sort of boil that down, I recommend starting with statistics, SQL, and one of R or Python, and if you're torn between those two, I give the nod to Python. So I'm gonna go write a prompt here, and I'm going to be super detailed and specific. To set the scene, I'm pretending I'm a newcomer to data science who wants to be ready to get a job in about six months. Maybe I'm making a lateral move because there are considerations there around degrees and things like that, but let's ignore that for now. I'm gonna specify that I want exposure to statistics, SQL, and Python, and that I want to take six months. Now, make me a plan. It then got back to me and broke down months one and two for introduction to statistics, month three and four for SQL and then transitioning to Python fundamentals, and then months five and six for some more advanced Python. It's also got, as we go to the bottom here, some additional suggestions. It's got regularly working on projects, joining platforms for coding challenges, networking, and portfolio building. So right off the bat, this is not terrible. If you have literally no idea where to start, I think this is gonna get you at least more than halfway there. And overall, I think the structure is pretty reasonable here. The amount of time allotted to each topic is pretty reasonable. And the tips at the end are pretty good too. I do have some critiques of this though. Like for one thing, there are no resources recommended, so I don't necessarily know how to start. I also think what we have for the statistics section is a little bit lacking and maybe a little vague. So just to be specific, I think you need at least a little bit more focus on things like linear regression and generalized linear models. And it also told me to work on real world data science projects, which if I'm a total newcomer, I have no idea where or how to even start with that. So what do I do now? Well, I'm gonna take that feedback that I just presented. I'm going to tell ChatGPT what I thought was good and what I'd like it to improve on here. So I told it that I like what it's doing with the overall structure, but at each stage, I like it to recommend some resources. I'm gonna specify that I like either free YouTube videos or books, and then that I just want some more detail for some of these points. In particular, let's get more detail around what it means to dive into inferential statistics or work on real world data science projects. And so what gets returned is a little better. You'll see at each point, there's books and online courses that are recommended. And note that 
This isn't gonna be perfectly up to date because ChatGPT's knowledge base only goes up so far. And I'm not familiar with all these books personally. So most Khan Academy resources are pretty good. I can tell you that Statistical Inference by Casella and Berger is way too advanced for most beginners. But you can see it's doing things now like telling me to cover p-values under statistical inference. It tells me to understand joins and subqueries under the next section in SQL. I think that's really good advice. And towards the bottom here, it's suggesting me to participate in hackathons on Kaggle or Analytics Vidya, which would be some pretty good ways, I'd say, to get some hands-on experience. Once again, what we're getting here is not perfect by any means. I'm not crazy about some of these resources, and I think it could have done a little better job at fleshing out some of the details for some of these things, but that's not really the point here. You see the process that you can keep iterating on this to get something better and better for you. And I don't do this personally, but if you wanna get more regimented about it and tell it break down for me hour by hour what I should be learning, you could iterate that way and have it give you something like that. Now I'm gonna show you something else that you can do to get set up and running in new tech in a matter of minutes, but is also pretty dangerous. It's dangerous in the sense that you can get a really superficial understanding of what it is you're actually trying to do. So if you take this really slowly and methodically, just go in small chunks and really invest the time to learn what it is ChatGPT is giving you back, this can really help you learn and deliver things very quickly. You can ask ChatGPT to help you write example code. Now, let's say I'm learning Python and I wanna learn the Streamlit package. So I want it to just give me a really simple app that I can study and understand from. Now, I don't usually do this because it's not representative of real world data, but just for a super simple example here, I'm going to use the Iris data set. So I'm going in and telling it, hey, I'm learning Streamlit and I want you to help me build this app. I want just a few basic features. I want to be able to toggle to turn the data at the top on or off, and I want to take in the continuous variables and then show correlation plots with all of them and to show some histograms. And guess what? It does that and even annotates it a little bit. Tells me to pip install Streamlit if I haven't, put the code in a file called irisapp.py, and now, all right off the bat, I can tell you it's using some reasonably good practices. Making a separate function to load data and caching it is a higher level practice. And look at that. This is code that's well commented and cleanly laid out and I can start to use it. So you can see the ChatGPT did a very reasonable job writing this code, but here's where I'm gonna come back to just how dangerous this is. You really don't wanna get yourself to where you're dependent on ChatGPT to write code for you. You can easily see a scenario where you have a ton of different requirements and you just get into this iterative loop with ChatGPT where you say, okay, can we do this? And then it writes code back at you. You say, not like that exactly, change this, then it changes it. And before you know it, you've pretty much used ChatGPT to automate your whole job away for you. And meanwhile, while all that's going on, I'm not actually learning or retaining anything for myself. So I'm gonna come back to, you want to use it to help you to generate good examples for you that you can use those examples to really study and to understand. And if you don't understand it all the way, come back and ask it questions. This is an excellent case where you can learn structure and features by example. And it even did one really instructive and useful best practice, which is putting this at st.cache decorator above the load data function. So here's an example of what you can do. Say you don't understand why it did that. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and just straight up ask it, hey, can you explain the motivation behind doing that? Then it tells me, yeah, it's used to cache the results of a function and it's useful when dealing with expensive computations or data loading as it helps improve the performance of your app by storing the results in the cache. And it keeps going to explain the mechanics of how this works. And I can certify this is a really good answer. And while this approach is actually deprecated and has been updated since then, it's actually st.cache data now, but the exact same idea applies and it's a super useful best practice that ChatGPT picked up on and that you can learn if you're curious enough and paying attention. So you see what you need to do. 
You need to not let yourself be lazy. You need to be proactive and to just let ChatGPT help you learn. You create these feedback loops by it gives you a response, you ask a question back and then it responds back to you. So use that feedback loop to your advantage. And it's a great segue to our last example, which is helping it help you approach problems. If you've been doing data science for a while, you know that real world data is really complicated and messy, and it's not always easy to figure out how to approach a problem because the problems you're gonna run into are not as simple as they are in statistics textbooks. So that just process of using critical creative thinking is gonna zap tremendous amounts of willpower and energy for you. So if we give ChatGPT a little bit of information though, it can help us. Here's a real world example that I'm working on at my company right now. So I'm gonna tell it, I'm trying to infer the reasons for employees leaving the company. I have a lot of features. I have an outcome that occurs about 15% of the time and the dates that it happens, the time it takes for it to occur, so on and so forth. I've got one row per employee per month. That's my data structure and the features have a lot of multicollinearity. Now what do I do? So it spits out a bunch of ideas here, and now this is gonna be a little bit all over the place. The first idea actually I think is the best idea, and I don't just say that because that's the main approach that I'm taking right now, and that's survival analysis. It goes on and talks about feature engineering, which that's obviously a critically important step. Point number three is pretty vague, that's time series analysis. Then it gives more ideas in number four and number five, like machine learning model types. LSTM is a great example that comes to mind, and so is using things like SHAP values to look at feature importance. That's something it talks about in point number five. And then number six is actually a really interesting idea around clustering. That's not something I've necessarily done with this project or would even be my first approach, but it's definitely creative. The challenges you often end up with, especially if you're somebody who's brand new to data science, maybe with a couple years of experience or less, is that it's really easy to get tunnel vision and just to focus on the wrong thing. Like, let's say you've developed a logistic regression model for a problem like this. It's not really giving you what you want. And so a lot of people, they'll just end up staring at the same problem, maybe throw some other little machine learning model at it, and then you just end up in this process for like a month where you're just throwing models at a problem and not really getting anywhere. Often in problems like that, you're gonna get a lot better results from coming back to your data, doing things like cleaning it up, getting rid of outliers or figuring out how to handle them, feature engineering and things like that, but that's a story for a different video. Data science is a highly creative process and almost nothing is gonna get you in more trouble than getting tunnel vision and just focusing on the wrong thing for too long. Luckily, if you're having creative block, you can go to that chat GPT list and all of a sudden you've got a lot of interesting different ideas that you can work with. And you can obviously ask it for more detail. Like for instance here, I'm gonna ask it to expand on that clustering example. So I'm gonna ask it, give me an example of what cluster analysis might look like in practice and how do I determine how the group of employees who left are different from the employees who stayed? So it launches into an explanation of k-means clustering and the setup for that. It gives me some code to set that up and maybe to use matplotlib to do some exploratory visualizations. Then it walks me through what the investigative process after I've done that might look like and how I can go back and link that to my turnover outcome. Again, this isn't groundbreaking necessarily, but it's not the first idea I would come up with but it's almost certainly better than what I was talking about with getting into a logistic regression rabbit hole for a week. So these are the sorts of things I do here and there, which have been really practically helpful for me to do more with less time, as well as to learn more with less time. I'm gonna say this again, and I can't stress this enough. You do not want to look at ChatGPT as something that's going to just do your job for you. You almost want to look at it as like this super experienced friend or mentor. I've always personally been able to learn things really well when I see a really good detailed example. Then I can move from that specific example to more general principles. And likewise, I learn really well when I'm working with somebody that has a lot more years of experience than me because they're just gonna have better intuition and more creative ideas than I do. 
And ChatGPT is going to help you get to those two things because your buddy who's a developer with 20 years of experience or your perfect Stack Overflow example out there, those things are just not going to exist all the time. Ultimately, I don't know what these tools are going to look like or what they're going to evolve to over the next few years, but it seems almost unquestionable that they're just here to stay at this point, and they're going to be a part of the workflow for a lot of jobs, data science being no exception. So you don't want to let them replace you. You want to use these tools to help you become unreplaceable. And if you shift to that kind of thinking, I think you're gonna do quite well. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you hated it, I guess you're free to hit the dislike button. And leave me a comment down below. Let me know how have you used ChatGPT? Has it been useful? Has it helped you learn things? Let me know. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard on data.